Okay, this, this is gonna be an interesting case study because our next presenter is a, another person who made his way from Indianapolis to, to the cities here. And he was in the real estate business and he came in, we got to know Andy Noble. And he was kind of creating a, a niche, really, as, as being a, a person who understands how important multicultural marketing is. And um, I think it's because, you know, you, you've been at all our conferences, man. But, but so now he took on the real estate business. Very much growing. We're talking about all these populations. You saw that 52% of the Asians own their own homes. How do you organize that industry? It's tricky, but Andy's gonna talk about his new vision of what that industry can do and how it can uh, conform to what's the population change and the, and the, and the, the dynamic uh, demographic changes here. So without further ado, the, 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 our friend Andy Noble with uh, Keller Williams. Andy, tell us about your new project. So let, I want to say say a couple uh, couple quick things. So I am a ca I am a case study as to why people, um, particularly in business, want to come to Rick's conferences. Rick's become a dear friend of mine, but I I am a student of Rick's conferences, and I've actually been in Minnesota for ten years. I think ten years now. Uh, born and raised Hoosier, Indiana, and uh, yeah, well there you go. Um, <laughs> But you know, I, I tell you what, I cannot say enough about this guy and these conferences. If you don't think these are important, I have been a student of Rick's conferences, and really a lot of what I've launched here with the Multicultural Agents Council is, I, I give a lot of credit to Rick. I mean, th th there are relationships right now that I'm leveraging to get this launched. Uh, the inspiration of this largely is due to my friend Rick. Um, this multicultural is, is real. And I think I've stumbled into something I'm not sure that I realized how big this is. But I, I've been in the uh, real estate industry for 20, I guess it's 26 years now. Used to own a Cobalt Banker franchise, mortgage company, uh, had about 38 employees as a property management firm out of Indianapolis. We used to manage about 3,000 housing units, uh, condos, homeowner associations. Uh, single family, and then I had about 900 units of apartments. So I've, I've spent some good time in the real estate business, and uh, I've been to the high, I've been to the uh, highest peak of the real estate business, and I've I've been very humbled in 0708 when uh, we had a downturn, uh, which was actually how I exited the real estate business after 25 years in 2009, and uh, kind of did a detour, which brought me to Minnesota. <coughs> and it gave me the good fortune to meet Rick and, and so many other wonderful people. Um, went into financial planning, and uh, just as a little background on me, and, and was in that for seven years, and uh, Keller Williams kind of found me, ironically, if we don't think social media works, they found me on LinkedIn. I mean, I was not out looking for a job uh, or a position, certainly was probably planning not to get back into the real estate business after the uh, the beating that I took in 0708 financially. And uh, I tell my agents this when we teach the social media classes, make sure you have a LinkedIn profile because Keller Williams found me that, that way through, uh, inadvertently through LinkedIn. And uh, that started a seven week process or journey of, of recruiting with my current boss and operating partner, Todd Haig, who owns four Keller Williams market centers here in the Twin Cities in Maple Grove, Eden Prairie, Burnsville, and Roseville, St. Paul. And um, so here I am, I'm a team leader, which is the manager of those offices. We've got about 120 agents, one of them's here today. We're gonna have a little, little uh, Q&A with. Uh, we were supposed to do a panel and one of our speakers uh, could not be here, so we're still gonna do a kind of a quasi question and answer with uh, Isaac, who's, a, who's just really, we're excited about his career. Uh, but anyway, to kind of get to the, uh, to get to the business of the day, so the Multicultural Agents Council is something that I've, I've been thinking about for the last eight months. And it, you know, after coming to Rick's conferences for years, it became apparent that we are living obviously in a very diverse culture here in the Metro Twin Cities. And actually, I was fascinated at some of the past conferences Rick would put on uh, with some of the folks like Saul Gitlin and, and some of these, I, I just was fascinated with the demographic numbers of how 
changing our environment is. And, and quite frankly, I was really, really surprised at how the details of how diverse the, the Minneapolis-St. Paul area is from a demographic standpoint and a, and a cultural standpoint, much more so than Indianapolis where I'm from. We used to have kind of a joke in Indiana that the, the essence of multiculturalism in Indianapolis was whether you were from Indiana, Kentucky, or Tennessee. That, that was the extent of multiculturalism in Indiana. But anyway, uh, so I, I've really found it fascinating that there's 90 plus multicultural communities here in the Metro Twin Cities. I mean, it's just really amazing when you think about it. This is, this is comparable to a tier one city like Chicago, New York, LA, when it comes to the multicultural base. You know, even though we don't have that population base, this is a very diverse area. So I started thinking, you know, now that I'm back in the real estate business for a year, what, you know, how are we going to maximize opportunities with agent recruitment? Because one of the things that I do is meet with agents and recruit agents to start careers in real estate, as well as focus on the larger producing real estate agents in the business to come over to Keller Williams, which is just a phenomenal company. Um, Keller Williams is the number one real estate company in the business. I don't know if a lot of you are aware of it. It's not Cobalt Banker, it's not Adina, it's not Remax, it's, it's Keller Williams. I mean, we have 175,000 agents and growing here in the U.S. and worldwide in over 40 countries. Uh, we are number one in volume of transactions and number one in listings. And people don't really know that, and especially here in the, with, with the mainstays, Cobalt Banker, Burnett, and Adina Realty. But Increasingly, I think that's that's starting to change, and so our value proposition has really been enhanced with this Multicultural Agents Council. And so I started thinking eight months ago, with some inspiration from your conferences, how do we appeal to folks in the multicultural communities to start careers in residential real estate, primarily? Although we do have a commercial component too. Um, how are we going to appeal to them? And I started just studying the market because I built a number of businesses and over the years. And I, I started studying the market first. I want to know my competition, and I couldn't find any evidence of any real estate companies that were focusing on this. So, thought there's a, there's a wide open opportunity in this space. So, um, what are we going to create? What's our value proposition with Multicultural Agents Council? Well, you know, Keller Williams has tremendous technology. Uh, coaching, education, and training, unlike any other company, which some people might say those are just kind of prolific platitudes, you know, for what we offer. But how are we going to go a little bit deeper? And so I, I'm thinking, how am I going to get people to start careers from these communities to serve these communities of home buyers? And so we started looking at the data in the Metro Twin Cities about the housing market. I'm going to share something with you that you introduced me to a guy by the name of Dr. Bruce Corey, who I'm meeting next month, who's been part of Rick's past multicultural conferences. He's also, I think, the head of the St. Paul New Mayor's Economic yeah. Development Team. Yeah. And Dr. Bruce Corey did a study in 2014, the only one that I've been able to find, about the impact of multicultural communities on our housing here in the Metro Twin Cities. And this was fascinating. Dr. Corey determined that the, the current, and this was in 2014, that the housing market total value of home ownership for multicultural was about $19.5 billion. Mm -hmm. So I thought it was interesting on your conference brochure, you're talking about $12.5 billion marketplace just for commerce. <laughs> we start putting real estate into this, this is a sizable, sizable economy. $19.5 billion, with a B, dollar market. And here's the interesting thing is, Multicultural communities only have about 41 to 44 percent home ownership. So then I started extrapolating from that. How big is this potential market? This is a this is a 30 to 50 billion dollar potential market here in the Metro Twin Cities. Nobody's talking about. It. I don't even think the local government leaders have even done the studies like the one and only one that's been done by Dr. Bruce Corey to, to even study this. So anyway, to encapsulate. We looked at this and thought there's lots of opportunity, but we also know multicultural communities tend to stick together. And, and I start looking at the realtor base and there's not a lot of realtors in all these different communities representing the, the sizable communities that are out there. How many of you know a multicultural realtor? Look, raise your hand. Okay, Any, what's that? I know Isaac. Isaac, there you go. <laughs> all right, we'll, we'll exclude Isaac from it. Uh, separate of Isaac, how many of you know a multicultural realtor? 
Yeah. See, I mean, that's not. I mean, it's, that's not that many people that are really aware of that many of the realtors. There, there, there are quite. There are a number of them, but as a percentage of the eighteen thousand realtors that exist in Minnesota, it's not that much. So anyway, we we looked at this and we created this council, which is basically, and I'll, I'll kind of be real quick here, and then we'll summarize and get get to Isaac, but. The Multicultural Agents Council is basically an additional platform that's really down to the low level, you know, where, where we obviously provide training, education, coaching, and technology in Keller Williams at, at, a, at an unprecedented level. We're now going down to the local community level here and saying, let's take the top 10 or 12 communities by size, multiculturally, and we're going to build a dossier, if you will, a data dossier on each of those communities and identify where do these people, where do these communities primarily live? Who are their community leaders? Where do they go to church? Where do they shop? What kind of housing data can we aggregate because nobody else in the market's doing it other than Bruce, and he did it four years ago and hasn't been one, hasn't been anything done since. How do we build the data on the housing market, both rental and home ownership? And so that's what the Multicultural Agents Council is going to do as part of Keller Williams is we are going to provide that information so that agents like Isaac, when he comes up and talks, can tell you how much value that is for him if he wants to work, whether it be in the Latino Hispanic community or he wants to work in the Russian community or he wants to work in whatever community, he can have an understanding about that community and how to get connected into that community because it's all about relationships and data, knowing the information. That's the only... That's the only barrier that a person has to start a real estate career and work in the multicultural space. Aside from the, the other things that we talked about that we teach every agent anyway, but how do you work in multicultural? You have to know the community, right? We're talking about a lot of that here this morning. So uh, it, it's really a fantastic opportunity. Uh, I've actually been surprised at the reception outside of Keller Williams that, that we've had for this. Uh, and I think it's going to be something you know you're going to hear more and more about as time goes on. But we're really excited to launch this, and uh, I think in the last 30 days we've recruited four agents that that we can tie directly to the, talking about the Multicultural Agents Council. I hired just hired a gal from Ghana uh, that's starting a career in real estate and just came out of real estate school as well as several others. So um, we're really excited about it. But I think it gives opportunities to also go to those communities and really work that number from 41 to 44 percent up to a higher number for home ownership because we want these folks to be homeowners and that that you know really becomes a uh, a great opportunity for us as a company you know not just from a profit standpoint but from a, an opportunity standpoint within the communities so that being said isaac why don't you come up here and we'll do a little isaac. Yeah, so so just wanted to kind of uh, ask Isaac here, you know, to share with share with the group, you know, kind of what made what made you decide to get into the real estate business. I know, and by the way, I met Isaac through Rick. Once again, this guy's guy's a heck of a connection. Yeah, but uh, what made you decide to get in the real estate business? So I've had some experience um, on the loan origination side. I really enjoyed working with folks on being able to get them to have that home ownership power, having using that buying power that they have and, tra and, and have it transition into being a homeowner, right? Same as some of what Andy had talked about in his past, I went down with the, <laughs> the 08, uh, the downturn there as well. And so the opportunity presented itself to get back into loan origination, um, help folks get refinancing, things like that. And I had been asked by a, a number of different folks. But what I found in my experience was that going through that process and helping folks from my community and uh, uh, understand how to and what is a mortgage, how to and what it is to be a homeowner, there was a gap that I found with the agent, right? A lot of these folks felt obligated to work with the first person that they talked to because there's some of that, a little bit of that uh, clansmanship going on that we talked about in the Asian community. The challenge is, and the difference is, is that there's a maturation in the Hispanic community where 
you're talking third and fourth, you're talking second and third generation folks who are no longer listening to the elders like they once did. So that power of saying, you gotta work with this person, or you should work with this person, has been diminished, right? And so coming out of that two, 2008 experience, there was a gap in the agent where the need wasn't being met in understanding the power of ownership, home ownership, uh, the scope of it, and what, it, what impact that had on their personal economy, the impact it had on the family, and so there was a lot of advantage taken, right? So now, I come back around 2017, and the question gets asked again, what do you want to be when you grow up, right? I had the opportunity to get back onto the lending side, but I wanted to meet, and I really enjoyed it, and I wanted to meet that need in having folks understand that from the Hispanic community, the power that home ownership has, and that you really, once you've decided, once you've made that mental decision, I want to buy a home, because the statistics show 81% of the Latino community wants to, they see power in home ownership, they want to be homeowners, the, 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 across the nation, the home ownership rate has been growing three years in a row, and it's the only population that's growing in home ownership rate in all the demographics, right? So how do we meet that need? And I, I felt I could meet that need in that education part. Educating in that personal impact, or that impact on the personal economy, and that impact on the family, because the studies show that when there's home ownership involved in a family structure, kids behave better, grades are better, and it just has that positive impact. So when I wanted to grow up again, right, reinvent myself, this is where I landed with Kelly Williams. And so t you've been in, you've been with us now for how long? When did you launch? October first. October first. So. I, I will say about Isaac, uh, and I used to own a Cobalt Banker franchise, so I've recruited many agents over the years. I would put Isaac in the top 3% of agents in terms of how he started out, what he's been able to accomplish already. Um, he's, he's rather surprising and, and uh, you know, just we're really, uh, we're really excited about his career because he's got a pipeline already built of opportunities. Uh, but that being said, I mean, what, what would you say, what percentage of your business right now that you're targeting or, and or doing right now is Hispanic, Latino, or, or multicultural? It is, it is in the low 90s as far as percentage of my uh, pipeline. But one of the things that's, that will separate me from some of the other agents who might be in, that might be targeting the, the Hispanic uh, community is the segment that I'm working with. Now, having been to a number of conferences, understanding the, the community, it's not just folks from Mexico. It's not just Spanish, or it's not just the ability to speak Spanish. Because as uh, Juani was saying, it's in the interpretation. Or no, I'm sorry, Amelia was saying it's in the interpretation. So it's not just about having um, a business card that says something in Spanish or it's not something about it's not just having a, a website that says something in Spanish it's being able to interpret and then within the many cultures that are Latin America whether it's the Caribbean whether it's South American Central American Mexico well, Guatemala <laughs> there's different understandings and the, just the same words and just different cultural mindset within that language is the bridge that you must cross back and forth on because the other piece of the Hispanic population and the home ownership in the Hispanic community is multi-generational, an increase in multi-generational homes. So not only do you have to be able to communicate with the folks that are the millennials who are going to be and are buying homes with their parents who are more comfortable or their primary language is Spanish, you have to be able to cross back and forth on that bridge <coughs> to be able to have the same conversation at the same kitchen table and it mean all the same thing, that everybody's on the same page, or that there's alignment, and then there's a, uh, uh, well, that service that needs to be met. Yeah. Hey, I got, I've piece. got a question, I can keep yeah. moving here, but, yeah. um, you know, I had just mentioned about uh, we'll take the Latino community. 
feeling feeling an ownership of the city. I mean, we, we, we're, I think we're dealing with it as we move around making our plans. You know, we're dealing with a, uh, um, I would say 50% of the Latino community is not assimilated yet, in a sense. You know, I was born and raised here, so we, we're, we, we, we went everywhere. This is our city. But your venue, for instance, let's take the opera, we'll take our old way. You know, terrific venues, but you know, the, the community doesn't feel that ownership yet, that they're, they can go there and they, they feel comfortable going there. How do you, how do you sell, because when you're selling homes, you're selling a dream too. Mm -hmm. How do you, are you planning to connect with some of these uh, organizations that we have so that there's some kind of a, 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 a collaborative effort here on selling the cities and just not just that house on the block. I well, think that's going to be important. That, yeah, and that's the other thing about having that multi-generational piece is understanding that that's there, that it's growing, and that it has that economic impact, that it has that buying power, right? So, and, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but within the Hispanic community, there's some things where that branding is diehard. Like, you're going to find right. Fabuloso in every restaurant and in 95% of the, the homes, right? But when you say the words Keller Williams, or you say the words Coldwell Bank, or you say the words uh, Edina Realty, that doesn't, that doesn't have the same kind of resonation because that conversation's not being had. Mm -hmm. So introducing that type of city owner, community ownership, understanding, understanding whether it's even there, right? We talk Ordway, you talk Ordway in the Latino community, and you're not going to have the same kind of impact because it's a it, it's it's a different uh, uh, has a different cultural resonance. But in the with, but you have to ha begin that conversation. That's why homeownership in many in many uh, you know in the Caucasian community is a higher rate than in the in the Asian community or in the uh, Hispanic community or in the Black community because that conversation is not continuously being had, it's not continuous in daily in daily dialogue. So understanding that not only does it have to be in Spanish, you also have to be able to bridge that in Spanish, and you also have to be able to take that, that transaction of that product from cradle to grave. And what I mean by that is I've been involved with different organizations, and, and, and Keller Williams is one of them, um, as with any real estate agent, agency, but Okay, so I get the I get the Latino uh, homeowner prospect to be interested in buying a home, right? Then what? They still have to deal with a lender. They still have to deal with a home inspector. They still have to deal with an appraiser. They still have to understand the tax documents, things like that. So you have to be able to service and recognize that you have to service from cradle to grave on that transaction, and then be able to take care of that afterwards. For example. You know, I did some work in the trucking industry and recruiting truck drivers, and there's a huge amount of opportunity with recruiting Spanish-speaking truck drivers. But what if I recruit a Spanish-speaking uh, uh, truck driver? <coughs> Who's going to dispatch them? Who's going to take care of payroll? Who's going to take care of their HR needs? Who's going to take care of their truck when they roll it into the shop? So you have to be able to be uh, understand whether or not your product can service from cradle to grave that transaction. Yeah, and I, I think also we're you know we're the reason we're doing the what we call the Mac yeah. um, is we can spend millions of dollars on advertising Keller Williams, which is actually not the Keller Williams model. We really don't spend that kind of money. I mean, on on advertising, we put it into education, coaching, training, but. Our best ambassadors are Isaac. So Isaac is the value proposition for Keller Williams to go out in the community and recruit more agents and to talk about you know, why you want to live in this community or be a part of this community more than Keller Williams ever will be. Because you know, that's, that's part of the reason we think going out and finding an army of multicultural agents and developing them to work with those communities you know, not only gains market share, but we we connect with those communities more than advertising dollars that are ever going to, you know, be sensible, sensibly spent on that sort of an approach. So that's that's real key. 
Uh, beyond that, that's that's what I got. If you know any anybody that in the title or mortgage business, which is actually our board of advisors, we have twelve uh, that would like to be a part of, of the MAC. We would love to talk with them. Yeah, did you? Just to Rick's uh, point and what you were talking about, Isaac, uh, right on. That's one of the big disconnects that I see, not only in Minnesota, but as a country. You know, this multiculturalism, as you said earlier, it's fairly new. Uh, and our organizations, our uh, financial, uh, our banks, our corporations, uh, you're a real estate agent, but all the support system behind you is not ready to, to handle that, to deal with that. So that's a challenge that we all have. And regarding the our way, it's the same thing, you know, invite us in, and, but we have to be willing to go in as well. It has to be a mutual collaboration. Well, great, guys. Thank you.